Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Today, I'm going to show you how to convert your old Atari ST joystick. Um, you might not have an Atari 2600 to plug it into anymore, uh, into something you can plug into your PC using this, which I'm now coining the ultimate joystick interface. Doesn't that sound very exciting? And uh, look, I've even done a whole manual for it. So it's a very uh, exciting bit of kit, and we're going to go through this a little bit later when we do the conversion. So the first thing, though, I know on the tip of your tongue you're asking me, why don't you put this in a box with a couple of DB9 ports and then uh, plug your joysticks into that? And that is a project we'll be covering in the near future. So just to give an example, there's a DB9 port. You could uh, plug your joystick into that and have that wired up to your booby board appropriately. I say booby board, ultimate joystick interface. Let's call it the right right thing. Though it does say booby on it. Um, and then you can plug that into your PC. And actually, this board will uh, allow you to plug two joysticks, believe it or not, into a PC at once. There's enough inputs for two joysticks. But the problem with these uh, joysticks is that they often fail inside. So we're going to open one up and have a look and see what the problem is. I've raced ahead and dismantled the whole joystick. Um, I pretty much figured out the problem. And uh, you can see from here, this is the central core that actually comes out of the joystick itself. And what it does, it touches the membrane here in certain positions and pushes on these switch caps. So you can imagine it's doing that. And what happens is, after a certain amount of use, this becomes fractured. So the actual um, joystick, you can see there, look, see it's broken there. So when you push down on it, this flops and then the button doesn't get pressed. So this becomes a bit uh, bit naff. So that's the first thing that's wrong with it. And then when I actually buzz this out, the cable set died. I suspect it'll be dead somewhere here in this part, uh, just next to the strain relief of the over molding. So uh, although it's an Atari joystick, there's quite a lot of them and there's quite a lot of good condition working ones. So I'm not too worried about um, converting this broken one. And actually, if you see here, it says $2.95. I bought them when I was in the US from a, a shop that had a massive bucket from them and they I bought so many they actually gave me some for free it was that that sort of here just take them that attitude so what you'll need though for this project you can see I've, I've separated everything out you're gonna need your super mega joystick interface 2.0 and to that you're gonna snap 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 off these tangs and actually to save a bit of time da -da 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 -da, I've actually done that because I've worked out that I can fit one of these straight there in an Atari uh, joystick so that's pretty sweet and then of course you'll need the USB cable so what I've done there is just use a Stanley knife and just open out that hole and then you can just poke that through I mean you're gonna to have to add your own strain relief to this I normally use a big cable tie a nice big cable tie and then I'll use some black glue gun glue and if you've never used it before have a look on eBay or you know CPC or wherever you go mouser for a black glue gun glue it's awesome stuff because it's harder you know there's different formulations of it but I didn't know they made glue gun sticks in different formulations and it, it's definitely um, a harder glue and you can see that pops in right there. So that's perfect. And then you can say, what are you going to do about this broken waggler, right? Because the waggler is the critical part. And, you know, to be honest, you can see here it's got all the uh, these different color things. That's different types of plastic I've tried to melt in there. And I've tried different glues. Nothing seems to want to stick to this because it's just, I think, nylon. It's just awful. However, you can 3D print them. So I have 3D printed. It's, although you sh they say you should use ABS or nylon, I've done it in PLA. They say the issue of doing it in PLA is it might, you know, break after a while, but frankly, that's really broken. So I'd rather have something I could just try at least. So you just pop that back in there. You see that goes in there and it's good to go. And then that's just gonna touch on there and hopefully our waggler will work. Now let's forget about the waggler right now because we've got to do the electrical connections now. Something you'll be aware of if you've been following my videos on the uh, UJI, as I'm going to call it now, UJ, <laughs> UJI, um, was that it's primarily analog inputs. You, you can make a load of really cool stuff with it because you've got 10 channels here and uh, eight of them are analog. So imagine you can want uh, your little flight sticks, your relays, your BBC micro joysticks, all of that. And then you go, well, how do I bring that in as a digital input? Because although you do have digital inputs for buttons and you can use any of these as a digital on off input, when you see the way these joysticks are wired up, it can be an issue. And I'll show you why it's an issue. And it's, it's really hard to get your head around it. Unless you want to start adding a lot of transistors to circuits, um, 
these things get quite tricky when you convert a digital to an analog interface um, especially you know you, if you've tried that where you've tried to use an Atari joystick on a BBC micro for example you end up with a lot of difficulty so we have the fire button the up the down the left and the right switches pretty much like that I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see because it's Nice thin pencil, but thin pencil doesn't help, does it, on the old world of TV land? Maybe we'll try my DVD pencil. And uh, what you'll need to do then, of course, is wire these up how they are on the PCB right here. And when you follow that through, basically they've all got a common um, wire that goes through. So let's consider this ground. It pretty much is ground on, uh, on most joysticks. I mean, technically it could be a 5 volts, but... It's, it's ground we're gonna say there we go so there's ground and then that leaves you with the five other contacts that are, are pulled to ground right so G N D and I'm gonna put zero volts so we know that so if you've got something that has an analog input right you kind of think well what what are you doing with that because in the uh, software it expects doing left and right you have an x axis and that's going to be a value from a, a potentiometer a variable resistor between 0 and uh, let's say 65535 for argument's sake right it's not that high but uh, argument's sake so you can see that if you're moving a, a, a joystick on a waggle stick like you have on your xbox right it's going to be giving you a value between that and you know if that's left right or in the middle because if it's in the middle it's going to be somewhere halfway and you can set that in the software the problem with this when you try to hook it up if you if you pretend this here is your analog input okay and that's your terminal here for your x channel how do you wire these two in such a way that you can actually um, get a reading off that so you, you can imagine there if you had it like that you press left okay it's going to read um, zero volts on there and it will probably float up to five or something uh, when you let go and then you've got your uh, right okay that doesn't work um, so then you go okay let's do something to, to tell the difference between left and right we know left and right can't be pressed at the same time we're going to put a uh, resistor in here will that work maybe if we put a resistor in here it sort of does work right so but the problem is um, if you imagine uh, this is your x uh, scale okay where you've got left and you've got right here okay you'll end up with something like when none of the buttons are pressed the the value is going to be floating here so let's say the let's for argument's sake say the value is floating around halfway okay so this would be like five volts that's zero volts the problem is because these are being pulled to ground whichever way you're doing a resistor or potential divider your value for left for example will be somewhere here and maybe your right value will be about somewhere here and of course joysticks don't like that because they need the dead zone to be in the middle of the two and it hates that right so i feel i've labored the point it's difficult to do however on our uji we do have these things here and you can see these channels like ch we have analog channels so five and nine so that's one pair and then all of the other channels are nicely paired up nice and simple they're next to each other there we go you see that they're paired up like that there's something called vds and i'll show you what the vd is because i'm going to look over and look there you go there's your description by the way of the digital inputs there's your description of the analog inputs i could have showed you that couldn't i when i was just talking right now but fortunately i've got a nice thing about the vds and how they work before we get into this part really simple and i think you've a bearing in mind on this you can see there's a truth table here it's really simple so you're going to use two input pins per axis right so now instead of your x being one at one pin you're going to use two pins because it's a digital one and we've got this truth table and basically it says if your say left switch is high which means your right joystick switch is low the analog the virtual uh, digital um, analog output is going to read low so that's good so the computer goes remember your scale left right okay so let's just say this is low good now if the input to the other way around where the um, one input the a input channel is low and then the b channel is high like you pull it to the right hand side then the analog output is going to go to high which is cool too because that means we want to go right so that works too 
Now, what if both inputs are low or high? Like, depending on your circuit, they could be both low or both high. The system recognises that, and what it will do is put an output, a uh, an analog output, of somewhere in the middle. And there you go. So now you can use those inputs as joystick inputs. It's that simple. You don't need any transistors, you don't need any messing around. Because that's something I didn't get into on that whole diagram on the back, is that, yeah, if you want to solve this, I'm telling you, you need three transistors per channel. It's a bloody nightmare. Okay, and then just before we get to wiring those, I will just show you briefly, I will just show you. If you did see my flight stick for Elite Dangerous and stuff, you did see that I was using a number of different inputs. So these really are the ones I normally advise. I like the two-way switches because you can have a 5 volts and ground there, so it's a very definite one or the other when you have the digital input there. Or you can use single push switches or single lat uh, latching toggle switches, but you would need to really put a weak pull up or a weak pull down as per your preference, really. You can choose whatever you like. And of course then if you want to use any kind of uh, variable resistor based inputs, of course, it could be the Xbox controller, the CCTV type controller I used before, the twisty pots, whatever you want, you just put in basically 5 volts on one end, uh, ground on the other, and then the variable swiper is going to be your analog input. Just make sure that that's some sort of decent value so you're not shorting out the whole circuit. I'm not sure off the top of my head what a decent value is, but I would say I would definitely start at 1k plus, you know, maybe 10k, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but that's basically your potential divider circuit here. If this is too weak, you know, very low value resistor, you're basically shorting 5 volts and ground, and you'll know that because if you plug it in, you'll short everything and maybe damage stuff. So let's just uh, continue and wire that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some wires sold them to the appropriate pins and then I'll show you what I'm doing. You can see we have some wires and luckily enough the wires match exactly the colours I've got here. I use them from old power supplies which means they're really thick. Because they're so thick you've got to be careful because if you bend the wire they'll rip the tracking off so you can see I've actually put a little bit of epoxy resin there and it's still a little bit tacky but I think it's, it's tacky enough that we can just continue. There's a bit of foam here to put to keep the wire down. Well, that's quite nice. I found that in the meantime. And the board, I've just put it in there and tested the wire and, you know, just to see how that would work and how the strain relief would work. Actually, it's pretty well relieved that way, so you don't have to do too much. Again, black glue gun glue. So what I'll do is I'll just take the board out of there for now. And then we're just going to study this ever so briefly and then crack on with it. Now, because we actually have used the same colours with the same directions, it's all pretty easy because I didn't really even, I didn't realise I'd done this, but I'd actually noted here the actual pins themselves even to use this configuration, which was nice, well done me. So really you've got here pin 11, pin 4. So just to show you again, you've got the left and the right. So the right's going to pin 5, which is channel 4 VDA, which is the VDA. And then the left, which is also on pin 9, which is also on uh, VDA, you can see there. So they're the two pairs. You see VDA, VDA, and VDB, VDB. That's kind of how it's going on. So you take your board, and then you look at your your colours, and you see which one are we going to wire up first. Pin 4, pin 11, pin 9, pin 5. So pin 3 and 4, two, pin 2, <laughs> 2, 4 and five look like the right order, so pin two is ground. We'll leave ground right now because we can choose ground on uh, pin two or pin 17. So let's start with that blue wire, which is the pin four. So that's going to channel one. So just imagining how this is going to be in the box, I'm going to probably solder them coming in from this direction because it'll fit a bit better. So I'm just going to get my pin four there. Just double check that. That's the fire button. And I already have used this board, so one, two, three, four. So it is nicely tinned already. A bit grubby, but that's fine. I love reusing stuff all the time. I'm always making stuff, so this is convenient for me. Uh, pin five is at the right, which is the analog input on red. So I'm going to take that one like a spider, bend it round, and I'm going to put that just there on pin five. So remember, pin 4 is a digital input, that's why it's on the fire button, because it's either just on or off. And this is an analog input, because we need that analogness for the, um, the VD, VDA. And then we're going to go to the next one, which was what, pin 9, I reckon? Pin 9, which is the orange wire. So we're going to then take that, just hold it that way. Put it down here, and then I'm just going to count the old pins in a second. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now you've got those two pins here, which you see aren't even tinned. They're the serial line tins. So if you were serial line pins, so if you were connecting this up to a microcontroller, be very careful. Don't touch those guys. Really, don't touch. Don't solder anything on those. You might damage the board. You really don't want to. And some boards, you see this here, this little in there. There needs to be that. It's actually a little solder jumper, but it's got a little permanent trace in there um, that needs to be cut. When these boards go out there, as um, for this purpose, that will be cut, hopefully, if I remember to do it when I program the firmwares. So what's the next wire after the orange, pin 9? We've got pin 11, which is the yellow. So let's see, 9. Just I'll zoom in on this one so you can see what happens. 9, 10, 11, which is that one right there. Apply a bit of heat. Mm, gold plated terminals. <laughs> and then we've got the green on pin 10. So we might as well just do that. The green on pin 10. Green, it sounds like some sort of bin, bingo, doesn't it? Green on 10. Hang on a minute. Hang on a cotton pick a minute. What have I done wrong? I done something wrong here. We've got the yellow that's supposed to be on pin 11. Let's count this again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 11. So the green on pin 10, come on, Andrew, get into gear, actually goes in here. That would have uh, been a big mistake. What a mistake at Omega. Name that show. There we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? I'm glad you're probably screaming at the screen there. And then we've really only got one wire left looking at it, and that's our ground wire. And we've got a choice here. You can either put it on the ground on this side or the ground on this side. I'm going to put it on the ground on this side, which isn't tinned, but that's easily rectified, isn't it? Boom, like so. Again, I zoomed out nicely so you didn't have a clue what I was doing, but you could see it right there. Nicely tinned, pin 17. We just apply that heat. And that as they say is that and that's the way that, okay um so technically now i could plug this in into the usb port on the pc and then just operate this to see if this works in fact i might just do that actually because this looks really dicey i'm not even sure this is bloody working um this might be a video where we replace these with tack switches <laughs> right and then we'll get it all in the box a quick heads up, I did assemble this and try it. I just couldn't resist and everything worked pretty well, apart from the fire button, which needed a weak pull-up resistor. So I just grabbed one off the shelf. I don't know what that is. It might be a 10K or something like that. And just to show you, there is description on these different ways of doing this. I think I did show you, but yeah, I've just basically added a weak pull up here and on the diagram it says one kilo ohm, so that's a good value. It was a little bit crunchy, I have to admit. Ah, the 3D printed version of this uh, probably needs work. I probably ought to just file it or something. So if, you've, if you go in this route and you're gonna go with the 3D printed thing, make sure you just get your file. In fact, why don't I just hit that ever so slightly now it sounded it sounded like it was hurting it was hurting something it worked but i've no idea how long the pcb would last with this grinding on it so let's not to worry about that right now though we want to continue so let's get this in there is a top on the joystick so that thing does go towards the top so we're going to plug in our usb because we want to have that all in place and we're going to try to get everything in. There's a lot of bits and pieces here that you want to stay put. So it's up to you, really. You could apply some uh, some hot glue. I would say that's probably a good idea. At least it's kind of um, undoable if you need to. But it does pop in there nicely, and it does all close on it. So at least that's it's got that going for it right now. So just be very um, careful with the wires, because you're trying to route them through, but at the same time, you don't want them to obfuscate any of the holes that you're going to poke screws through when you go to put the case back on so you're going to get it more or less in this position now this is where you need a lot of sets of hands because you've got the button here with the spring on it that's going to live there and you've got the parts of all the bits in the joystick that are trying to fall out all at once so it's all happening at once 
And the best way, at least I can advise you to try to do it, is I poke this through here and I'm gripping the handle really tight because this 3D printed part is a bit loose and wobbly. And uh, I just try to bring the two halves together, paying attention to that fire button. There is a pin here, you can see it right there, long one, that has to mate up with that PCB. So if you go at an angle, you can just about see it. You can see there. I'm not going to go too far, I'm going to lose that spring. Those holes go in lining up with the pegs, and I'm holding it out upside down. Ah, here we go, look, got it. Boom. Now I'm going to put the screws in, let's see how it all sounds with the screws. And these are just standard old, I guess are they, ooh, they look like Posi Drive to me. Get those in like that. There's some quite nice um, sort of t-shirts on the market showing the, these joysticks. It's sort of basically like a uh, patent office design. Let's get that in there. I just noticed something. There's that bit of foam I saved to put in there. I think that foam's not going to go in there now. <laughs> wasn't really needed. It just seemed com like a sort of more completionist thing, really. If you get your foam in, it's like it's more real, isn't it? Okay, we're almost there. One more. Get them good and tight. Don't over crank them, but you don't want to leave them loose. Yeah, that's that's pretty crunchy. <laughs> that crunchiness is all on me. <laughs> I might need to uh, take apart one of those, you know, the Atari Flashback 3 remake things and see if they use the same sort of core or beg someone to print me a nylon one of these. Still. Let's go over to the computer and try it out. Damn it, that worked until that happened. It's time to put it all together. So I've got my tablet here and I've plugged in the joystick to the little USB, so you're aware of that. And I'm just going to show you what I, uh, I need to do, or you need to do if you're using this as well. You need to go to the VJoy website. You can see that right there. I'll just try to turn off the lights. It's a little bit glary to me. Yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? So you go to the VJoy website and then you go and download the VJoy device driver and you just hit that there and then you install that. Just answer the questions. There's no problem installing that. It's nice and simple. And then you go over to um, VJoy Serial Feeder and I'm not quite sure which web page uh, you'll go to. Just type it into Google. But this one that I'm using is the GitHub Cleric K VJoy Serial Feeder Releases. So that's where he's got the binary releases. And I've downloaded release 1.4 for Windows. Just sort of hit that there. So it goes together. So you've got the VJoy device driver and then you've got the serial feeder, which will interface to our USB device and pass that through and allow us to configure things all up. So I'm just going to load up the VJoy serial feeder. It's on the desktop, but you can see I've pre-configured it all. But what I'm going to do is just do a new profile, and I'll show you exactly how I did that. So I'm going to start off with a new profile. Um, so because we've got two axes, up, down, left, right, and a button, we're just going to add those. And I feel I want the button first. It feels natural to have a button first. And then add two axes. And I'm going to make one X and one Y. And you see the channels. So currently the channel one is correct because we know that that's what the button's on. You can see as I'm pushing the button, it's flickering away. In fact, let's set up the button, get it out of the way. So I'm going to hit calibrate here and it says set the input to off position and press next. We so press next, set the input to on position, hold that down and press done. And there you can see on off on off. That's nicely configured for us already. So it's coming on when we're hitting that button. So what we want to do now is set the other two channels. So we want to use our virtual digital channels, which are starting at channel 11 and channel 12. Remember we hooked it up as to the instructions I had. So you're going to see all of the analog channels as you go through there. But we're not going to use the analog versions. We're going to use the DA interpreted ones. So we're going to hit calibrate again. Send to the joystick and press next, so we're going to do that. And now I'm going to press it to the left and to the right, so you can see the value changing there now. So as I'm pressing right, it's going down, and left it's going up, so I'm probably going to invert those, so just an invert there. And I'm doing that from experience, by the way, guys. I know the left and right will be inverted if it's not working this way around. So there you go, 0 to 50. So in the, the dead zone where it's in the middle, it's saying 50%. Left it's saying 0, right it's saying 100. So you can see that bar graph flicking in the background. And I'm just going to set up the Y channel the same way. Press next in the center position, move it up, 
move it down and there you go and the Y when you push up it goes down and down it goes up I'm pretty sure that's actually standard that's correct for this so some things are a bit arse about um, and then what you need to do is save that so you just type in your name there of your file um, in fact I will do it it's a bit tedious on this thing because it's got a touch screen keyboard so we're going to put it in there and we're going to put in uh, VCS because it's an Atari VCS controller I'm going to hit save and that's it so whenever you load up this package you can see I'm going to disconnect it shut it down so I'm going to load it back up so it won't interpret anything till it's loaded so you can have it auto run if you like it's up to you and you can see here it's set to COM3 so I just hit connect and it's all hooked up and then at the bottom down here you see it's running at 41 Hertz 41 updates per second so as I as I hit the the buttons oh hang on oh channel 0 I must have cocked that up, save that. <laughs> I must have uh, changed the channel by accident of the fire button. But you can see that now, it's all saved away. And then what we need to do now is just load up something. So I have this thing called Stella, which I just grabbed, which is an Atari emulator. And I do have a copy of Yars Revenge on it. And pretty much right away it worked, which is nice. And there's your Yars Revenge. And you can see, I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can actually see. Maybe put the lights on. Does that help? No, the lights definitely do not help. Um, and that's the old Yars Revenge playing proper legit. And the funny thing about this is, I um, I always thought that emulated uh, Yars Revenge or VCS actually sucked. To be honest, I kind of it it made the system seem worse than it is. But when you play it with the correct joystick. It does feel better. I have to admit, it does absolutely feel better. And whilst it might not be the, the greatest use of one of these uh, ultimate joystick interfaces, um, I think it's a bloody good one. I'm glad I did it. And I'm glad I uh, learned how to repair the old joysticks as well. So I'm hoping uh, that's useful to you. I'm going to be putting these on my shop shortly. Um, so you can just pick those up. And I will be including this. Oh gosh, that's that noise though. Maybe we fix the playability, but we haven't fixed the sound. Choo, choo, choo. Um, I'm going to pop those on the uh, shop and I'm going to make a PDF of this guide so you can follow that if you want. It's not the most comprehensive and there's certainly a lot more things you can do with this. But you guys, as you're pretty much going to be hacking, hacking and soldering your way through this, we'll just work together, pick it up as we go along. And don't forget, you've always got my Discord if you need a hand on that. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, head over to backofficeshow.com and pick up your Ultimate Joystick Interface V2, the Ultimate Edition. Bye-bye.